Hey, what's up you guys? It's Andrew from Posh Designs, and today I have episode 13 of my weekly series called GFX Tip Friday, where I go into Photoshop, After Effects, Cinema 4D, or another demanding editing program, and I show you guys one tip that can be used in everyday editing. Now, in today's episode comes from my buddy DVIC Designs, and he basically just says, hey, can you do a touch on a good YouTube avatar? Now, this one is for you, DVIC Designs, and this is how to make a perfect YouTube logo. So guys, we're going to hop into Photoshop right here and we're going to go to File, New. And we're going to set our width and height to about 500 by 500, just so we can keep kind of that perfect square image. Now right here, this is going to be the size that we're going to be working with. Now we want to make sure that we select a good background color that will match our YouTube background. Now if you guys don't have a YouTube background already set, I would definitely recommend a gray or white color, um, just because it kind of goes with anything. Now I'm going to be using a gray, so let's come over here to gradients. Uh, if you don't have the gradient tool, you can obviously go to the paint bucket and go to the gradient tool right here. And then we're going to kind of select a more dark gray to a light gray. So right here um, on the left one, I'm going to select kind of that darkish grayish color. I'm going to go with 282828. I'm going to press OK. And then on the right side, we're going to pick kind of uh, just a little bit lighter of a gray. So I'm going to go with 4D, 4D, 4D. And we'll see how that looks. So we're going to press OK. And then we're going to just select down here and press hold down shift. That's going to make it uh, so it goes just in one straight line. And we're going to let down. And there we have kind of a really nice gradient that will go well with our um, avatar. So to do this, what we want to do is we just want to make some text. Or we can use um, kind of our personalized text that we have uh, imported from Cinema 4D or whatnot. Now, a lot of people don't know how to make really nice text in Cinema 4D. If you guys would like a tutorial on how to make really nice text in Cinema 4D, just leave a comment in the comment sections below. If I get enough comments, I'll definitely do one for the next GFX Tip Friday for next week's. But in this one, I'm just going to show you guys how to use it with just a font file that you can just get in Photoshop um, just so this can kind of work for everyone. So we're just going to go over here to text, and I'm going to be using the font Janolane. If you guys don't have that, you guys can obviously download it from dafont.com, or I can just uh, there's going to be a link in the description below that you guys can download um, that font from there too. So we're just going to lay down this, and then you want to select kind of the right words. Now, if you have a really long name, now I'm just going to use this for reference, Chase on Two Wheels. Uh, he's a moto vlogger. I've talked about him in a couple other of my commentaries before. But uh, his is Chase on Two Wheels, and you guys can't fit that on one logo to make it look nice. So as what he does is he uses C2W. Now, that's obviously a really good way. Now, if uh, you're just a company called Posh Designs, I just use Posh um, because people just know me by Posh. They don't call me Posh Designs. They just call me Posh. So you guys just want to make sure that you guys can kind of use um, that kind of good lettering. Now, uh, I'm just going to give one more example. I used to have a gaming channel called X Skunk Bro, and I used XSB, uh, which was kind of a nice uh, just shortened version of X Skunk Bro. So you guys want to kind of limit it down to about three to four letters is what I would recommend. So I'm just going to just use C2W. Sorry, and we're going to use C2W just like this, and then I'm going to just select this, and I'm going to kind of just play around with the font until I think it's big enough. We're going to use it right about there. So I'm going to take this, and while I'm selected on my text layer, I'm going to hold down Control. I'm going to select my background layer, and then up here, there's going to be six buttons. You guys want to hit the second one, which is going to be our vertical centers, and then the second to last one which is going to be our horizontal centers so after you hit that your c2w or whatever text you have used is going to be right in the middle of your composition so after you have that you want to select kind of a nice color that's not going to kind of compromise your guys's background now black i wouldn't use on a gray one because it's not going to show up very well just like on whites you wouldn't use uh, a really light grayish color so right here i'm going to use a nice white color I'm going to use E, 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 so all E's. <laughs> that was kind of weird. Um, but yeah, just select OK. And now that I have this text, now is what I want to do is I want to kind of customize it to whatever I want. Now let's say I was using a red background is what I would want to do is right click on it, go to blending options, and then just make kind of a nice, um, you know, kind of a, just a nice style for your guys' text. Now I will show you guys how to uh, make a really nice style. Uh, I already have it actually saved as a set style, but I'll just go over with you guys. 
Um, the drop shadow, I would definitely uh, recommend it to be in the zero distance and then have it to 20 by 10, which is that's your spread set to 20% and your size set to 10 pixels. That usually is probably one of the best drop shadows I've ever used and it looks really nice on text like this. And then the inner glow, I would definitely just recommend about a size 2 with a white. Don't have it yellow. The, the preset is ye uh, yellow and I would definitely set it to a white color. Now it's going to be set to overlay and the technique to softer with the edge selected. So um, if you guys didn't follow that, just kind of pause the video and just look at these settings. I would definitely recommend these settings as uh, well for the inner glow. Now the gradient overlay, you guys just want to select whatever color you want. So I'm just going to go with red. So to make a nice red gradient is what you guys are going to want to do is you guys are going to want it to go from light to dark. So the first color is going to be the color that we're going to have at the top, which is going to be a light red. So I'm just going to come over here and select red and uh, just select kind of this top layer. Anything up here is going to be your light red. So I'm just going to select that. And then your right color is going to be um, your dark color. So you want to uh, obviously go with the same color, just red. And as you see, this gradient looks really, really, really nice on this text. Um, I love the way it looks, and it just looks amazing. So if you guys want to use the same colors I'm using, the dark red is 5C0000. And then the light red is going to be set at FF0000. So you guys can definitely use those, and um, I definitely prefer this red color. It looks very nice, and I just love the way it looks. So after we have that, we can press OK. And then one other thing that I really like to do on YouTube logos to kind of give it a nice flair is definitely add a color correction on it. So I'm just going to go to File Open, and I actually have a bunch of um, color corrections saved as my gradient maps. And then I usually use either the color correction or the nice CC. Um, so I would definitely just open this. And I'm just going to drag this on. If you guys don't have a bunch of color corrections, I'm not going to kind of go over how to make a color correction right now just because it would take a lot of time. So if you guys don't know how to make one, I would definitely just search up on YouTube how, um, you know, color corrections, free PSDs, stuff like that. You guys can find them for days um, just on out. So definitely recommend going to do that. But we can kind of mess around with these colors because as you see, it's kind of dark, of course. So we're going to open up this color and kind of just play around with it. I'm going to select the kind of this white color. We're going to select OK, and then play around with this black color. That's a little too. All right, we'll play around with this blue color as well. And you guys just kind of want to just make a just make a nice gradient is what I would recommend going on this, and then play around with the color corrections if you guys do have it. Um, I also have a much better one that I think I'm going to actually use. Um, if I go to file open again, and I'm going to use this one. This one's a little bit more nicer for the logos themselves. And see, this one looks really nice, and it just kind of gives a more edge to your guys' logo. It kind of makes it pop a little bit more, and it just looks, I, I to me, looks a lot better. Now, one last thing that I will show you guys is how to add kind of a reflection to this. Um, YouTube logos that have kind of that reflective uh, kind of thing going on where it kind of shows it a little bit more white in some areas and a little bit more dark in some areas, like a light is casting on it. I would definitely recommend doing that because it makes your logo look 10 times better. So we're going to be playing around with the pen tool. Now, if you guys don't know how to use the pen tool, last week's GFX Tip Friday was on how to use the pen tool and how to use it effectively. So definitely go check that out. Uh, annotation is in the top left corner, so definitely go check it out. But I'm going to just kind of select it right about here. And then I'm also going to select it maybe right about here. And I'm going to hold down Shift. And I'm kind of just going to pull out until I think... It's right. So right about there is a really nice arc that has been developed right here, and it just looks really nice. So I'm going to hold down Alt. And I'm going to select on this point, and then just kind of go around the image. You guys don't have to have to make it perfect at all. Um, just right about there, that's fine. And then you want to make a new layer right here. So layer one. So just hit this little guy right here and just make a layer one, and then right click on it, go fill path, and then I would recommend going to the use color. And then select about a white color. I'm not going to select a bright white. Um, actually, we'll just go with a bright white. Why not? And select OK. And then right click again. Say delete path. And then after we have this, we are going to want to take this layer of one. And we can either change down the opacity to about, uh, you don't want a very strong reflection. I would say maybe about an 8%. You guys can also, uh, when it's at uh, full 100%, you guys can set the uh, blending mode to 
uh, overlay and that'll also overlay it as well and then you guys can always turn down the opacity to whatever you guys like um, I'm gonna turn mine to overlay to about 30 percent that looks good and now we have a YouTube logo that we can use on our YouTube now this looks really nice and this was a really simple tutorial just so you guys can know kind of the basics of a YouTube avatar if you guys kinda want a more advanced one where you guys use 3d text you guys use your own personalized logo definitely let me know in the comment sections below as well and I can definitely go over a more advanced realm of a YouTube avatar well guys I hope this GFX tip Friday helped you guys out a lot if you guys have any questions or concerns definitely leave them in the comment sections below until next time guys my name is Andrew from Posh Design I make quality graphics for free and I make your visions a reality. We got everything but one light out. You shine for me. Illuminated by the chemistry. Astronome and my thoughts keep telling me to get me home, but my balls keep telling me to let me out. Oh, just let me out. That clock keeps ticking like a metronome, and my thoughts keep telling me to get me home. But my balls keep telling me to let me out. Oh, just let me out. That clock keeps ticking like a metronome, and my thoughts keep telling me to get me home. But my balls keep telling me to let me out. Fuck all that shit, just let me go. Oh, words and taste makers, makers, no tracer. Gets the blood flowing like a fucking pacemaker. Cut the middle.